are going to show how you utilize the new conversion kit for the Weatherhead T400 crimpers. So pretty much this is your basic Weatherhead T400 crimper. This is the existing crimper bowl and pusher plate in the crimper. Now we'll be replacing some of these components depending on what we're doing. So we'll step through that next. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate the uh, conversion kit for the size 4 through 10 size hoses that we have in the crimp chart uh, for this conversion. Uh, basically, it's 100 or 1, 100 or 2, 100 or 16, and 100 or 17. And the, the, the equipment will actually crimp up through 1 inch, and I, I showed that in a separate video, uh, how to do a 16 size or 1 inch size. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to do a half inch, 100 or uh, 1 hose actually, with our 12 series coupling. So uh, we'll start with what is available in the crimper as you get it from Weatherhead. It has a base cone and the, the, the die is actually right on this surface. And then it has a top press plate that has a recess to catch the dies. You can see here. And that goes like this. Okay, with the conversion on the 4, 6, 8, and 10 size hoses, you do not need the push plate that comes with the factory installation from Weatherhead. So we set that aside. And we will be replacing that with one of our own for this conversion kit, along with the dies and the proper spacer plates. Okay, as I mentioned, the kit comes with a uh, new press plate for the top and uh, this is how it appears. It's, it's actually similar overall shape and size but it has a, a uh, recess around the perimeter instead of a, uh, a cone. Kind of compare these two. This is the original weatherhead and this is the conversion kit. So it's just kind of the opposite as far as this protrusion is uh, corresponding to the recess in the uh, Weatherhead original plate. So we set that aside. You'll notice that there are two uh, magnets around the perimeter here and that will allow you to set the spacer plates directly on that and they snap to the magnets, hold on, and works really well. So I'll show you that. Okay, this is our crimp chart. Um, You'll see that, again, I'm going to be crimping 100 or 1, size 8, so I go down and, and it's 100 or 1, 0, 8, with the 0, 8 J.I. die set, the blue set, uh, the first one there, and it shows a spacer ring of number 6. So I will show you how I identify those. The kit comes, depending on what you wish to try to crimp, we can customize the crimp. Uh, to keep the cost down to the minimum to the end user, uh, whatever spacers and, and dies and plates that they need for their specific needs and, and if, or, you know, we can sell them everything, but it, in many cases it may be more advantageous to just buy the tooling that they actually need. So that's the, the way we're starting the program. So again, uh, spacer number six and the way they're identified, show you that. There's a series of holes drilled around the face of the spacer ring itself. And the, the differences in these rings are actually the thickness of this. The inside diameter, outside diameter is all the same. But they're identified permanently with this, a series of holes. And in this case, there are two holes. And that means that's a number two spacer plate. So on the chart we just looked at a while ago, it requires a number six. So. In this case, this ring has six holes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's the one we need. So I'll show you how that snaps into the press plate. We just sit it in there and it snaps in. Nice and tight, nice and snug, has just a little bit of radial clearance just so it makes it easier to get on and off, but it's a, a nice fit and we will be putting that down like that, the spacer goes down, and this is what the ram actually contacts uh, during the crimp cycle. So now I need to get their dies. And you may recall that 
for this particular hose, we needed a, the eight size blue dies. All the dies are color coded, and this is the example of the blue ones, the eight size. So, uh, I'm not going to lubricate these dies just for sake of time and for uh, the fact that they have been lubed already, but you want to lube this surface. You want to also lube the top surface, just like you would with the, uh, the Jason JCD 165 T420 dies, because the pusher actually runs on this and as this is coming in, there's a, there could be friction along the surface as well as the angular surface. So you want to put some lubrication across that. And when you place the dies in the machine, you want to put the split of the dies facing you, the operator. So like that. So we'll pl place those into location in the cone, positioning them, make sure that they're aligned. Then we take our press plate with the number six spacer and just sit it on top. Now the way these work in this crimper you slide it back, there's a couple of large roll pins back here on the weatherhead crimper, you slide it back until it contacts it and centers it. And that allows for alignment with this pusher uh, that is actually on uh, part of the, the ram of the uh, crimper. So we slide it back out to load the hose against some shorter roll pins. And then, again, this is a full crimp, so we want to make sure that we the dies are fully contacting this cylindrical surface. And the way that um, this crimper, the best way to do that is to make sure that the dies kind of line up with this lock-on area here. So I'll pull the plate off just so that you can see it a little bit easier. Normally you wouldn't need to do that, but again for the video. I'm going to set that lock-on pretty much even with the surface. I slide the plate back into position, making sure it's centered and registered against the other parts. And then this is a fixed crimp, so we just run the crimper uh, ram in until it bottoms out. You hear a pitch change on the motor, and you know you've got your crimp diameter. So here we go. We have it, the full crimp, and we will measure the crimp diameter. Okay, we will measure the crimp diameter with calipers. Uh, you want to again measure in the center pretty much of the uh, crimp area, and so I'll put the calipers across that carefully. I like to measure them on the flat of the anvil. Uh, some people like to measure at the tips. Uh, this is a, a much more broad, evenly spaced uh, surface that uh, provides better contact. If you've got a lot of ridges, you can't do it here, but since this is fairly smooth and we've got good uh, uh, die contact area, I'm going to measure that in the flats. So let me get my camera lined up here. And I'm going to measure that. And again, this particular one uh, should have yielded a crimp diameter of 24.2, and my calipers show that it measures 24.19 or 0.01 off of perfect, so that's well within the tolerance that we allow plus or minus 0.12 millimeters. So, got a good crimp? Okay, this is the double angle die set required for 12 and 16 size hoses in the conversion kit for the Weatherhead T400. It consists of having a bottom plate with the taper small side down, small part of the cone down in it as the base. <clears throat> you place the correct dies in the crimper. In this case it's a 16 DAJI, which stands for double angle, Jason Industrial. And you notice it's got an angle on both sides of the dies, top and bottom. They fit in the tapered base plate. There's a tapered base plate identical to that. There's no right or wrong as far as which one you choose, it's just that you have to make sure that the angles are correct. On the bottom plate, this small diameter goes to the bottom. On the top plate, just reversed, it goes on top. Before you put the 
top plate on, you put the uh, correct spacer in position. This looks around the dies, sitting on the bottom plate, and then put the top pusher plate back on top. And you can nest it by hand to make sure that everything's good. And again, you need to lubricate the dies surfaces so that you do not put a lot of wear in, on the, uh, the dies over time. So it's good to go. Again, our crimp specs are here. And the one we're doing in this case is 117, size 16, using that 16DA JI die with a 773 spacer. And it'll yield a 41.1 millimeter crimp OD when we're done. Again, this is a fixed crimp. There's no adjustments, it's just all done by the tooling. Okay, here's our hose that we were crimping, and as I mentioned, it's 117, size 16. And using our 12 series couplings. This kit is only for the 12 series couplings with the appropriate hoses that I have on the crimp specification chart. So we position the dies. Again, we want to get a full crimp. So we'll align this lock on pretty much at the top edge of the dies. And that'll give us a complete crimp of this ferrule. So maybe a little difficult to see, but I'll make an attempt. Again, that lock-on needs to be approximately the top surface of the dies. So I just kind of nest it down just a little bit. Makes the top coming back on. Okay, I've got the hose assembly in there. Uh, the dies are correctly nested. I put my hand on the top plate and just push the whole thing back against the roll pins in the crimper, which aligns it with the pusher of the ram of the crimper. And again, it's a fixed crimp, so we crimp this until it bottoms out uh, the stack of tools. Uh, you'll hear the pressure change on the pump, indicating that you are fully uh, uh, collapsed on the, on the tools. So here we go. You heard that change in motor speed and pitch, whine, and I'm going to slide it out now, remove it, and as you can see we've got a nice full crimp. Okay, we're going to measure the crimp we just did in the conversion kit in the T400 and so I measure across the, the center section pretty much of the ferrule that's been crimped and measure it carefully to make sure that I'm centered well and the crimp OD measures 41.15 millimeters and we allow a differential uh, plus or minus 0.12 millimeters in the crimp diameters, so we're well within spec.